uh, good morning, good day, good night, whatever time you're watching this. I had an idea of just recording a video of me just talking about how hard it is to master a killer. When I say about master, it's not how hard it is to pick them up and play, I'm talking about how hard it is to use their mechanics to, to, their, to their full potential and uh, capitalize on Sarah's mistakes based on that power. So the first killer is Trapper. He spends um, approximately two minutes of the beginning of the round to set up traps. He chooses an area, he picks up the, his traps, he traps choke points, uh, safe pallets such as shack pallet, um, depending on the other maps. For example, uh, maybe if you're unlucky enough you get the game, you can go and trap the bathroom pallets, and there's nothing Suarez can do. If they're in a the chase, they'll just get trapped anyway. So, stuff like that. It's really important to understand what to trap and what not to trap, because you'll be wasting a lot of time with Trapper if you don't know what you're doing. I mean, that rule applies to literally any other killer, but Trapper is one of the biggest exceptions, because if you're bad with Trapper and you don't know what to trap, you're gonna lose 100% of the time, because survivors will just either see you trap certain pallets or loops, and they'll just defuse them whenever they can, or they'll, they'll never get trapped because they'll just avoid that certain area. So I, I would say Trapper is middle ground. Yeah, I would say Trapper is middle ground. He is not too hard to understand, and he is not too easy to grasp as well. Because you gotta know where to trap, you gotta keep track of people uh, seeing you, because if they see you trap a certain pallet, they'll 100% go and de defuse your trap, just so you won't get any use out, out of it. I recommend watching Atzdarwa, a very well-known streamer who mains Trapper. He knows all about them, so yeah, if you want uh, some guidance, you go. You can go watch him. Next up is Wraith. Wraith. He's a stealth killer. Uh, his power allows him to go invisible. Kinda invisible. Because... When he goes invisible, he can still be seen. Uh, like there is like this weird aura around him that you can see, and also he makes loud stomping noises, loud breathing voices, and when he's near you and when he's uncloaking, you can hear like this little fiery sound, so you can tell that he's uncloaking really really fast. But that also leaves you like only a second to get to get to a power to the window, because otherwise you'll get hit when the uh, Wraith is behind you. Um, however, the killer itself, he is really, really beginner-friendly. His power is easy to understand, his power is, e is easy to use, which really... just there's literally not too much going for him. Because once you get... once you understand the game, Wraith just becomes just a fun gear to play. There's not nothing hard about him, he's just fun, so he's in, in easy tier. Billy. This 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 starts this is starting to get interesting. Billy, um he is a really, really interesting killer because his power does many things. One of them is being really, really fast, which makes you a map map control killer. He can get to point A to point B really fast. And, he, and his power can also insta-down people, which makes him a really good chase killer. But the thing thing about him is that you have to charge your chase first, and only then you get in your sprint. What that means is that when you uh, rev up your chainsaw, and when you're done with the charge, there's like one second window when your sensitivity goes to a, a thousand, or something like that. And what that means is that, is that when you turn, if you turn that really, f if you turn, during the during the increased sensitivity moment, you can flick your chainsaw really, really hard. What that means is that you can, like, for example, like uh, let's imagine a jungle gym. So this is um, a jungle gym, like this box. Okay, let's uh, imagine there is a window here. This is a window, and um, there's like a pallet here. Wait, not not here. There's a pallet here. There's a pallet here. And so imagine Survivor is like around this corner. This far around his corner this corner. And you're standing here revving up your chainsaw. 
what that means is that you can charge your chainsaw, go like this, when your and when your chainsaw is ripped up, you can quickly turn to the left and go straight for the spiral like this and chase on the chainsaw them immediately. Something like that. Um, I know my drawings are awful, <laughs> but this is the best I can do. <laughs> um, but it, so what it also means that you can turn like 360. Like, like let's imagine you're charging chairs, so you're going forward, and then you can go like this basically. If you're using add-on, add-on, uh, uh, add-ons as well. Uh, there's li li there's a lot for uh, about this character to explain. And I don't think I can really go into that into detail more because I'll just get confused. So I put Billy in the hard tier because of how much tech there is with him and how much you can control the area with Billy. Yet one of his hard one of one of his kits, uh, one of his uh, advantages is how he can how he can um, um, control the area. Control the loop of where 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 the survivor goes, because his chainsaw is a insta down threat that the survivor wants to avoid. So what that means is that you can um, you can zone people out, like um, like pyramid head can zone out people. Billy does it uh, a bit a bit worse. Uh, I mean, pyramid head um, zoning was nerfed finally because he was so cheap and so easy to use. Um, Billy's zoning is a bit worse because it takes time to charge your actual chainsaw, but still, it's still a visual threat, and the swear will avoid you. So that so if you're smart enough, you can uh, you can do some really good plays with your uh, control tool. Next up is Nurse. She is uh, she's considered she's considered the hardest killer in the game, and I really really disagree because. All, all you really need to know about Nurse is how much, is how far your blink goes. And that's about it, actually. You just really need to know how far your blink will go, for how long you need to hold your M M2, and how far will that, that uh, blink will go. All about her is really just muscle memory, and I, don't, I really don't think she's that hard. I mean, she takes, she takes time to get used to, that's for sure. I'm not saying she doesn't, but all you really need to know about nurse is just how much time your blink takes to charge, and that's about it. There's still mind games with her, but you know she's just she just becomes a killing machine once you know how to play her. So I'll put her in the middle tier. Michael, aka the shape, aka the the stalky boy. He's really really simple to understand. Um, his power is evil within. You stalk people till you hit hit tier two. Um, you start the game in tier one. That means you have no tier radius, no red stain. But you're but you're slower than a you're slower than a normal killer, and your launch is also really small. But once you fill up your uh, stalk stalk meter to tier two, you become a normal killer with a slightly increased sp uh, vaulting speed. But once you hit tier t tier three, um, your 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 each attack becomes an insta down, and you also vault uh, windows really really fast. And that's about it, to Michael. The only like real tech I know about him is just holding your till to ninety nine. So when you see a healthy survivor, you just kind of press into once, and you just kind of insta down them real quick. There's also understanding of, uh, understanding of when to pop your tier 3, because I see a lot of new Michaels just pop their tier 3 at an injured survivor. I don't know why, I guess it's just a beginner mistake. And I also see a lot of people just pop their tier 3 at a single survivor, instead of saving your instead of saving tier 3 to down, multi to, to down multiple people, because Michael is one of the best snowball killers in the game. So I'll put him in the middle tier. Actually, no, I put him in, in the easy tier. Hag. Oh, Hag. Oh, Hag. She's... Um, so, Hag, Hag's power. Um, she's also a territor territorial killer. But the thing about her is that she is 110% speed. A normal killer speed is 115. A Hag is 110. 
a why uh, because um, her teleport her power allows her to teleport around the map she plays a trap it takes like barely a second to to do I, I, I think and uh, if a survivor walks over that trap it gets triggered and a hack can and a hack has a window to teleport to that trap immediately so that makes her a really good con map control killer what that also means is that she can be an actual asshole and just place a million traps around one hook which makes it basically impossible to just unhook a person safely because they'll have to crouch they'll have to waste a lot of time just crouching once they get unhooked they'll have to crouch again and by the time Hag is done doing whatever she's doing she can just walk over to that hook and she can either scare survivors and make them trip their traps and get hit anyway or she won't come there and they'll waste a lot of time just crouching away from that said area of the hook and that makes it, it really frustrating and boring to, to go against Hag and it really doesn't take that much effort from Hag either it's just place one two traps and walk away they'll trip they'll trip your traps eventually she I mean yeah there's obvious skill understanding of where to put your traps why to put your traps there and time management as well but she's really really not that hard to understand and grasp so I'll put her in easy tier doctor this one is really interesting to me because if you land your shock wrong you will not just you will just lose every single time because if you miss your shock survivor gets the window they get to loop you again or if you miss miss time your shock at a pallet they will just either drop it or they'll keep looping that said pallet but once you understand when to shock you just it just becomes it just becomes a, a, a clock for a survivor until they die because you time your shock well, they don't get their vault, they don't get their power drop, and they just kind of die. So that makes it kind of fun for a survivor, but you know, you can also pre-drop, which is also really boring, because survivors want, survivors want to have a chase, not just a power simulator, if you get what I mean. And his skill ceiling just kind of stops there once you understand when to shock. So... But he's still really... He's a complicated killer to understand. And I, I get what, what people mean when they say that doc is, Doctor is hard. But I don't really agree because it doesn't take that much time to understand when to shock people once you get your timings right. But I guess he's middle tier. Huntress. Huntress. I think this is a really obvious tier. I'm gonna explain why. Uh, Huntress is a, is a 110% killer. And her power is to throw hunting hatchets. Uh, she has five by d five by default, and she can have up to eight if you use if you use the add-ons. The thing about Huntress is that she's a hundred ten percent, hundred ten percent, and she doesn't have means to travel the map fast. So what that means is that you have have to be really precise, uh, and sh and uh, uh, sure on where you're going, because if you're going somewhere where there is no gens, where there is no survivors, you will just lose a shit ton of time because the time it takes to get back from point A to point B with Huntress is incredibly long and slow, so you have to understand where you're going. So her power is to throw hatchets, and each hatchet deals one state of damage, so if you hit the injured, injured survivor they go to dying state, if you hit a healthy survivor they go into an injured state, obviously. and um, her hatchets have um, an arc at which they fly. What that means is that you have to account for an arc when you throw a hatchet. For example, long distance hatchet hatchets. Those are those are the hardest ones to hit because you have to understand where to throw and where the hatchet will land because of that arc. You have to also account for uh, structures ahead of your hatchet. You have to account for survivor movement, you have to account for how that survivor plays, you have to understand, do they dodge the hatchets, do they wiggle right and left, do they do this, do they do that, 
so there's a lot of two understandable hatchets and uh, hunters as well she takes a lot of practice to be good at because just one day off, off of playing her in you'll be trash in the next game just like with the hardest killer in the game in my opinion I'm gonna explain why when I rank them and if you want some some if you want if you want a guide on Huntress, you can check out Scott John's guide. It's still on YouTube. Or if you want to watch someone play Huntress, you can check out um, Umbra uh, and um, Ralph. Ralph. Those are the like, one of the best uh, Huntress players in the game. So I recommend watching them. Next up is Baba. Baba was recently um, reworked. His power is now token based. So, after you do your first um, your first dash, you can do one more, and then one one more. And his addons were also reworked. Um, that didn't make him any harder. That that made him slightly harder to understand because if you want to get your maximum distance, you have to understand when to pop your. You have to understand when to pop your um, your tokens. So, for example, for example, a start you don't really time your uh, chainsaw well. So, let's say your first dash gets like this distance, then you start doing your second dash, you start doing your third dash prematurely, and this is the distance you gain. However, if you time your dashes perfectly at the last second, for example, you can get this distance to say, this distance instead. You go from here, then you pop perfectly again here, then you go here. For example, so if you if you want to maximize like this, I mean this is just uh, how it may look like if you pop your uh, tokens properly. So that makes him not. Uh, he's really interesting. I want to put him in the middle tier. Of how to how to play a killer because you also have to play powers properly with Bubba. Freddy. Freddy, Freddy, Freddy. This one is uh eh, he's he's easy as fuck, <laughs> let's, let's be honest. He's really easy to understand. You place your snares, you can spam your snares like a fucking madman, and you can get uh, you can also teleport from from a uh, to a generator, which, which also makes you a map control killer. Which you're also a really good chase killer, so you're basically perfect for the game, in a bad way, surprisingly, because Freddy is extremely, extremely boring to go against, because he can just spam his snares, and you'll always be slow. You will, like, nothing will save you. You you'll just die. It's really boring to go against Freddy. His add-ons also give um, give speed to gens and healing reduction, uh, depending on uh, how many people are asleep. So it's just he's just a really easy and boring killer. There's nothing else to him. Pig. She. Uh, her kit has three three certain aspects. One is her stealth. The other one is her dash. And the third one is are her traps. So her stealth is crouching. It takes approximately four seconds to uh, lose your terror radius, and I think it's like two seconds to lose her red stain if you want to use that in a chase. Uh, what that means is that you can sneak up on survivors, but you're really, really slow when you're crouching. So you have to be certain when on where you're going when you're crouching. Um, her dash um, when you're in your when you're in your crouch um, crouch stage you can hold and one and you'll and you'll begin a, a really short dash that you can use um, what new pick players do is that they just m1 every time they see a survivor when they're kind of up close to them which uh, the most effective strat, strat is to just uh, press control again and stand up and just hit them because that's more time saved than you think uh, however a few more experienced big players such as uh, scorpions on twitch if you want to watch that guy he's streaming on twitch he is he uses her dash as an offensive tool in a chase and there's a lot of to explain about it 
and if you want a really detailed guide, you can watch that on YouTube. So, here really, the only hard part of her uh, kit is her dash, and after that, there's really nothing else to her. Oh, and traps, those are just RNG based, so, you know, there's no really skill involved, it's just luck. Mm, so I guess I'm gonna put big in the middle tier. Clown. Clown. Clown, I think Clown is a really... Clown is just Freddy but bad. There's really nothing much going for Clown. He just draws bottles, doubles back, he get power pre drop in his face, repeat. There's really not much to Clown, I don't... <laughs> Let's just move on. Spirit. Spirit. She is basically just a headphone killer, so go away. Legion. The stab stab man. Um, his power allows him to um, go into a feral frenzy. And once you hit a survivor, all the survivor auras in your terrorists are revealed to you. What that means is that you can get map information really quick. But, if they're not in your tail radius, then you know nothing. <laughs> so that kinda, you know, it depends if they're up close. But the information you get if they're in your tail radius is really good. So, that's why Legion is a decent killer. He's decent at best, I would say. Even though I'm main Legion, he's just, he's decent. Because if survivors spread, there's nothing you can do. You just become an M1 killer with a with an occasional speed boost. So, um, Legion is Legion is easy to Legion is easy to understand and play. That's my opinion. That's just everything in here is just my opinion. I don't mean to offend anyone. <laughs> this is just how I feel about the killers. The plague, the plague is really really weird to rank because her power is to puke on people. What that does is infect them. Um, infected survivors can also infect uh, certain objects, such as pallets. They can infect uh, totems, gens, chests, and lockers, and also exit gates and items, actually. What that means is that if a healthy survivor touches those objects, they, they also get infected, and the plague herself can infect those said objects. So, for, so survivors get sick. The thing about her is that once survivors get infected fully, they're broken and they can't heal, and they're also really, really loud and green. So it's so so it's really so the, it's so they're really easy to tr track. However, um, survivors can cleanse. Um, like fountains will spawn all over the map, and if a sick survivor goes to them and cleanses, they get insta healed, and they're no longer broken. But what that does for uh, for plague is that the fountain the fountain becomes corrupted, and if, and if a plague goes to that to that said fountain, she'll get a corrupted purge, and that corrupted purge replaces your uh, your vile purge, and your corrupted purge does one state of damage to a survivor. But what that means is that your your secondary power is dependent on survivors. Survivors can just ignore the ignore cleansing till like the end game, and you'll be just stuck as an M1 killer. And there's just really, really not much to understand about Blake. So uh, she's she's um, she's middle tier. I would say she's middle tier. Ghostface, Ghostface. Um, his power allows him to just lose his tail radius and his red stain. Um, and also, he can stalk. So he's like Myers, but more effective, in my opinion. Uh, no, no, less effective, what am I saying? He's less effective because he can get... he can he, You can get him out of his stalk by looking at him. But the thing about him is that he's fucking broken, <laughs> just like this game. Because people can just stare at you directly and they won't uh, get you out of your power which is which is bullshit if you ask me but you know this is dvd everything is bullshit there are certainly two playstyles you can you can use as a ghost face one of them is hit and run 
is where you use a double recharge double recharge add-ons you always just press your m2 whenever you have your power you just hit the survivor when they can't see you because you have no red stain no no uh, tear radius and then you just kind of leave them be and go into your your um power again you go for another survivor you stop them you go into your power so it's really just boring and and it takes such a long time to just finish uh, finish a game with, with the ghost face like this they usually use like sloppy butcher that phobia and all that stuff so it's really just boring and the second long, second play style is stalker ghost face what that means is that the go the ghost ghost face player would um, will usually use their power to stalk people so they'll knee so they'll lean off of objects they'll play stealthy they'll play more effectively they'll 99 the stalk so when they meet you they just use their power for one second and they instant down you so it's similar to michael but it's more of a more of a time management more than anything, more than anything else so hidden one ghost face is just really risky and boring to play as and against so but ghost face takes a fair amount of understanding of the game but because of he's bugged just because he's a buggy piece of shit i'm gonna put him here demogorgon I apologize. Uh, Demogorgon. He has two powers. One of them is his portals. Uh, he can place those by holding control. And he can teleport from a portal to portal, which makes him a map control killer. But the thing about it is that it takes such a long time to set those teleporters. And once you do, it takes such a long time to get from one to the other. His portals certainly need a buff because they're just really sluggish and they're really just just slow to use. And his second power is his shred. Uh, what that means is that once you hold your M2, oh yeah, fun fact: uh, if you hold if you hold your M2 and a survivor is is near your activated uh, t uh, teleporter, you can see their like killer instinct aura, uh, like the Legion one has. But yeah, his shred, um, what it does is that once you charge your shred, it takes like uh, barely a second to charge, not fully charged, just semi-charge. You, you dash forward, and if, if and if that dash hits survivor, they get hit by one health state. What that means is that, oh, oh his power, um, you go in a straight line. Like once you release your power, you go in a straight line. You can turn in any way, you go in a straight line, and that's it. What that means is that you go really, really fast in your dash, in your shred. And you basically negate Shaq. You basically negate Shaq. Because if it's, if you're... Like, uh, let's imagine Shaq. Um, let's imagine Shaq. So, Shaq is a box. Yeah, Shaq is a box. Like this is Shaq. This is Shaq. Here's um, here's the pallet, and here's the entry to the Shaq, and here's the uh, here's the window. I don't know why I drew this here. And let's say a survivor is like over here, and they're going for uh, for the window vault because they need to save time. They need to waste your time. And let's imagine you're Demogorgon Demogorgon here. And by the time they walk over here, you are here. That what that means is that you can charge your shred right here. And while and when the survivor is almost near a vault, and you see them go into the vault animation, you can just shred towards them and hit them. Or if the survivor goes for the for the pallet, for the power drop, and you're a hundred percent certain they'll go for it, you can also charge your shred and go for them. What will happen here is that either you get a hit, or they drop a power and you immediately destroy it. So, Demogorgon can also use his power on uh, any other loop. Like, for, for example, he can use the same strategy uh, on a jungle gem. If you're certain, if you have a long wall, if and if you're if you're certain the uh, survivor is gonna vault, you can shred through him, shred them through the window. Or if you see that they're faking it, you can also just let go of your M2 and just hit them normally. So there's also mind games of just not using your power at all. 
However, it takes he has a really uh, he has a cooldown which makes it balanced. So I guess demo is middle tier. Demo is middle tier, I would say. Oni, Oni. Um, he has no power in the beginning of the match. You're just a walking M2 killer. However, if you hit two survivors and suck enough blood, you get your blood fury. What that means is that you, by activating uh, your power by using control, you use your blood fury. And what that means is that your, if you hold your attack, it becomes an insta down. And if you hold your M2, if I'm, if I remember correctly, you go, you go really really fast, like faster than Billy, I think. Uh, you also have much more control than Billy, and you can bump into objects and get nothing. You won't get a pen, uh, you won't get a penalty, a cooldown like a Billy does. But his power is way, way, way short. Like his power is way shorter than uh, Tier Three Myers, because Tier Three Myers is one minute, and Oni is like forty seconds, I think, or a minute. I don't really know, actually. So don't just scream at me, okay? Um, what makes Oni hard is um, getting those early hits and managing injured survivors. Because survivors, if survivors aren't injured, you won't get any blood. And if every survivor is healthy, that means we have to chase them. We have to chase them down as just an M1 killer. So it's really, really important to uh, manage injured survivors, manage your time, don't waste your time. Because if you do, survivors will just either do gens, uh, or they'll just fully heal. Which will also force you to go again and just chase them down. So, because of all those aspects, I think Onis is in the heart tier. Deathslinger. Deathslinger is... He's like spirit, basically. Not in terms of like, buy, buy headphones and win. He's just... The, the, the time survivors get to react to your power is so, so, so little that it's actually just hilarious. Because survivors get less than a second to react to you shooting. And that's just... Like, his counterplay, it doesn't exist. You just have to pray that the player is bad at the, at the Death Slinger. You just have to pray he's bad. And that's not a good, that's, that's not a good killer design. He's the same as Spirit. You just have to, have to hope the Spirit is awful at the game and you'll win. The same with Death Slinger. Uh, sorry, had had a had a real had a quick pause there. So, uh, Dev Singer, you just have to you just have to pray they're bad at the game. But Dev Singer also takes time to practice his shots, and his uh, spear hit box is actually really really small, which allows you to hit through really really small gaps and loops, and then that that that, that takes time to practice. So, I'm really just I really want to put him. In the middle tier, he is not too hard to understand. He is not too hard to play. He's just his shots and his uh, he, and capitalizing on his really really small spear hitbox takes uh, time to practice, in my opinion. Blight, blight, easily, easily the hardest killer in the game to master. There is so much you have to account for when you're playing Blight and when you're using your uh, your charges. You have to understand the map, so you have to understand the whole, every single map to be effective on it. You have to understand well, what structures, how, how to play uh, every structure. You have to understand survivor movement. You have to understand what, what they will do next. You have to think five million steps ahead. To hit a survivor on a certain loops. He he goes really really fast when he uses his dashes. He has five of those. Uh, his first one is always just a regular dash. You cannot attack. And if you bump into object and then you use your dash again, then you can attack. So that that means is that you have to plan ahead when you're gonna dash because your first dash will always be non-lethal. 
and there's just a lot to explain about Blight, and I don't feel like making this video an hour long, so I'll just recommend watching Scott John's, Scott John's guide on Blight, but in my opinion he's the hardest killer to master in the game. The Twins. The Twins. They are the newest killer, aka most known as the bug, because Binding of Kin is arguably the buggiest, the buggiest chapter of all DVD. But now they're fine. Now most of the bugs were fixed, and most of the buffs were applied, and now they're kind of a decent killer. They're really, really good. Um, but the thing about about them is that they're not really healthy for the game, because they are really good at at, at camping, and they're really good at slugging. And those two things are like the most hated things about killers. Because people hate when killers camp for no reason, and people hate when killers slug. Because let's be honest, being slugged is like the most boring thing in the game. Like, let's be real. But uh, like, the, like twins is just Victor, if with added Charlotte, to be honest. So they're not too easy to understand, and they're not too hard to grasp either. So. I'll put them. I'll put them in uh, uh, middle tier, because if you miss your pounces, you you get punished really really hard. So they're in the middle tier, and pyramid head. This one is really really interesting, because old pyramid head used to have basically no cooldown when you're using his um his punishment that attack. What that man, what that means is that um, he used to have no no cooldown, which means he, he was an absolute zoning machine. There was literally no effort. There's no effort to there was no effort to use his uh, zoning tools, and he would always get a hit no matter what because of just how purely bullshit his uh, punishment cooldown was. But now that the behavior actually listened to the people. And they nerfed him, thankfully. Now he's more, he's less of a pain to deal with. And in terms of mastering his power and all that stuff, it's not really that hard. So I'll put him in the in the easy tier. And that's about it. I know people will hate me. People will say, "No, you should put this here and put 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 that here." And all I can really say is that this is just my opinion. So I'm literally a random guy on the internet who plays DBD. So yeah, this is my opinion. Have a nice day, y'all.